Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. All right, guys, I have the honor and the privilege to talk to you guys for a little bit. Is that okay? Cool. So I'm really good. I love to have conversations. So if I ask you a question, don't give me doe eyes. Like, okay, go ahead and you can answer me, please. Um, how many of you guys have been played? Right? In high school, some of us got played. Just kidding. How many of you guys have been bamboozled, deceived? You bought something and you're like, this is not how it looked in the picture. That girl did not. I'm just kidding. Everybody's gotten played, right? And so I'm going to talk to you about being played. But I wanted to look at some things that we might have been played about, okay? And if you guys have those items now, I'm sorry. I exposed the truth. Okay, first picture. How many of you guys bought these in the 80s? One of them, one of them is real and one of them is fake. And so you you would know, right, because your neck would be green. Um, So one is real, one is fake. So whoever bought the fake one was deceived that it was real gold. The next one. Nikes and Mikeys. How many? If you have Mikeys, I'm sorry, but one of them is fake, one of them is real. And so whoever bought the fake ones were deceived. They were played. One more. Cubic zirconias. I'm sorry if you have one. Obviously, like this one has more facets than that one, but if you, you bought one, you wouldn't have known unless you studied it, unless you knew the truth about diamonds and zirconias, right? So I wanted to talk to you guys about being deceived. I know that's that's heavy, right? Um, as I was talking about, I was, I was praying to the Lord and I'm like, God, what do you want me to talk about? The struggle, the promise, the press, like, you know, like, what do you, what, what do you want to talk about? And he's like, I want to talk about deception. And I was like, oh, that's heavy. That is so heavy, God. But it's actually something I went through. I got played, played. And I was so angry. You know, when you get played, you're like, oh, never again. How many of you guys said never again? I'm never going to order from that website. I'm never going to talk to that person. I'm never going to trust that person. We never do it again, but we allow ourselves to be played by the enemy all the time. All the time. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I got played. So this is how it came about. Um, In March, I was going through a really rough time. Can I be honest with you? Can I be real 100? I'm going to be 100 because that's who we are here. We're real because the truth sets people free. So I was um, in the front row. I I remember they're like, okay, P-Fell, it's time for you to take it's time for you to receive. And I was like, all right. I was so, I was in a place of disappointment. I was in a place of discouragement. I literally was like, God, are you real? I've been walking with you since I was seven years old, filled with the Holy Spirit at seven years old. Of course, I had this big time of partying and craziness. But I came back in 2010. And from 2010 to 2018, I served God with all my heart. And here it is, 2018, a year of new beginnings, right? We heard that. Um, I'm in the front and I'm in total unbelief, total unbelief. I literally am sitting there and I'm like, God, you promised me all these things, this, 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 and it has not come to pass. And I'm sitting there sad. I'm super sad. I'm angry because that's like my first emotion, I confess. And so I'm sitting there and I'm angry and I'm like, I'm in the front, the worship pastor. I had like the rap stance, like, "Mm," you know. And in my head, I'm like, I don't believe you, God. How many of you guys have said, I don't believe you? It's, a, it, it's a feeling a little sketchy. And I was, I was telling God, I don't believe you. God, you lied to me. You said you would deliver me from this. You said you would redeem me from this. You said that you would bring this to me. You said that this family would come. You said that this family member would show up. You said that this family would stick around. You said these things, and yet I don't see it. And so I was up here, and I was like, I don't want to worship you. And it's hard to be in that state as a worship pastor because people were looking at you like, how, how long has she raised her hands, you know? And I was, but I was being real with God. I was in the front. And I want to expose why I was in that place of deception. And so I'm sitting here. And um, so it, it, was, it was from March to the 10 days of prayer and fasting. Praise God for that. I know some of you guys are like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to fast. And I've been that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to fast this. And then I end up eating it. Anyways, but... <laughs> This, this year, I took it serious. I said, I am going to completely give myself in 10 days of prayer and fasting. So from March to, to the prayer and fasting, I was in an up and down roller coaster. How many of you guys hate those cycles? You're like, oh, I'm, oh man, I'm on top of the world. I love Jesus. You're skipping. Next day, you're like, get out of my face. I'm like, I don't know if he's real, girl. I'm still l- looking for the promise, you know. 
but we're like this. One week it's, it's heaven, one week it's hell. One week we're ministering to people, one week we're like, I don't want to even hear the word church, or I need to go volunteer, or I need to go see people. And so this was me every other week, just up and down. <clears throat> and, um, and I was ministering in that place. And, and I sat back and I was like, God, you are so faithful because no matter what I go through, no matter what we go through or what we do, he's still faithful. He's still merciful. He's still gracious. And so, so I'm sitting there and um, I was worshiping and I, I remember hearing the same call over and over. If you're discouraged, if you have anxiety, if you have fear, if you have depression, God wants to heal you. If you have anxiety, if you have fear, if you have depression, if you, if you feel like you can't go on. If, I mean, over and over. And I said, God, we're your children. God, I don't want to be in that place anymore. I don't want to be in discouragement. I don't want to look and say, God, well, um, you know, maybe my family's going to come, maybe not. I, I'm, I, I don't want to feel not loved, you know, all the time. Or I don't want to feel like you're not there. And so I cried out to God and I said, I will get my breakthrough in, in fasting and prayer. I will. And so in those places, you feel like you cannot keep going. You don't even want to talk to God, honestly. I, I was like, nah. I would get up and I'd be like, thank you, Jesus. And then I would just move on with my day. Uh, literally, I was like doing this to God. Like, <laughs> can you just walk with me, pretend? That's how I was with God. I was totally um, away from him. And so it was Monday for, uh, it was the first Monday for prayer and fasting. And I sat on my kitchen table and I said, I'm going to get a breakthrough. And that's how you get breakthroughs when something inside doesn't quit. Right? The, the person who wins, the person who's successful is because they don't quit. And I had a pattern of quitting my whole life. Like, the moment it didn't feel good, it didn't feel right, I'm out to the next venture. And so God settled me. He planted me here. Psalms 92, I, he planted me. Whether I liked it or not, I was like, okay, I said yes. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. I planted myself. And the one thing I tell people is like, okay, you want change, you need to plant yourself, you need to commit, and you need to never quit. Never and that's the hard, I mean, I probably said I quit in my head probably like two million times. I quit, I quit, I quit, but my actions wouldn't. I said, no, God, I can't quit. You saved me from death. I probably would have been dead at 27. I knew it. I thought I was Tupac. And so I thought I was, you know, I was like, I'm going to be dead at 27 because I'm going to live a crazy life. Now, I'm not going to tell you my age, but it's past that. But I knew that God had mercy and a calling for me. And so anyways, I'm like, God, we're going to have a breakthrough. And you have to have that, that fight inside of you. That's the lion of Judah. That's Jesus inside of you saying you're not going to quit. You're a lion inside. So I sat there, and then he goes, I go, why do I feel like this? Why do I have a cycle of unbelief? Why do I go up and down? Why do I feel like the world is better? Of course it's better. You have no pressure, no call. I mean, you're doing whatever you want. Nobody's telling you what's up. But you don't have nowhere to go to. You know, so anyways, I'm like, okay, God. And he said, well, this is why you've been deceived. I was like, what? No. Okay, let's, say this, let's do this again. Lord, why did I go through this cycle? He said, you've been deceived. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's, and basically in my head, I'm like, I got played by the devil. I'm like, no, he didn't. And so he said, you've been deceived. And my, my next question was, why and how? Why was I deceived? How was I deceived? And he said, every time the enemy would discourage you, boom, right? Discouragement is actually us saying, I don't believe you. So it's kind of like we bring it on ourselves. But every time we get discouraged, every time we get hit, our defenses would go down. Boom, boom, boom. And so now my defenses are all the way to the bottom. I'm not believing in God. And he said, so now your lies are your truth. Now, as much as you want to say, God, I believe in you, the lie is stronger than the truth. And then I said, how did I get there, right? How do you get there? After eight years, how do you get there? And he said, you got there because you walked away from the truth. And the truth is him. And so all, the, all that time, I would come to God's presence, get my fix. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, you helped me. Praise the Lord. I would get my fix, and then I would peace out. I can do it on my own. And so here I am in a cycle, and God said, you've been deceived to believe that I'm not good to believe that you're not worthy, to believe that you're not called, to believe that, you know, that I'm never going to give you what I promised. My eyes were more focused on the problem than the, than the problem solver. And so I was like, God, why do you want me to talk about this? And he's like, that's, that's, the, that's, the, 
the foundation of the cycles that we go through is deception. And I was like, wow, right? So then I looked up deception, if you can put it up. So being deceived, fail to admit to oneself that something is true. So I was failing to admit that God was true in my life. I was saying, no, it's, it's false. He's false. He's not coming through. And so another thing for deception, um, I printed my notes double-sided, never do that again. So deceive, it's the trickier cousin of a lie. And I was like, okay. And God said, it's running rampant in the church because you guys all know the truth. And that's why it comes in a trick form. And so I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah. He's like, if I was to tell you God's not good, you're going to be like, yes, he is good because I know he's good. Right? But he tricks you with discouragement. He tricks you with deception. He tricks you with disappointment. He tricks you with childhood triggers. Right? Childhood triggers. You're like, whoa, I forgot about that anger button. You're like, I'm seeing red. <laughs> right? That was me. Not anymore. I've been delivered. Um, and so th let me just give you an example. Okay? You're like, no, I don't get deceived. I don't, I, don't, I don't do that. So deceiving is like this. You might lie about why you were late to school, but if you simply don't explain to your mom that you were late in the first place, you are deceiving her. Right? So that's deception. It's tricky. And so... Here comes Adam and Eve, right? They're strolling with God in the cool of the night, just chilling. That's how God wants us to be. Hey, I got it under control. Tr walk with me. And then, and then um, the serpent, and I always think about like Jungle Book with the lisp. <laughs> Here comes the serpent, like, you know. And so he's telling her, hey, why can't you eat this part? What, because you're going to know good from evil? Why is that wrong? Tricking her. Right? That God was wrong. That God wanted all the power. That, well, he did. He's, he's the one who made us. But he was trying to give her and convince her and trick her to eat the fruit. And that's exactly what happened. She wandered away from the truth. Right? And as Christians, we wander away from the truth. We're like, all right, God. And so he was exposing to me, Felicia, it's because your guards go down. That's the trick part. So here comes the enemy. He's tricking you. Go back to your past. Operate from that place. Go back to your triggers. Get back to being the old person, right? The moment I don't spend a, t a week with God, a, a day with God, old Felicia comes out. You guys know. You guys have old yous, right? You're like, wow, I'm getting fast. I'm getting mad faster. I'm holding on to, to grudges faster. And so I wanted to expose that because I'm sick of the people of God. I'm sick of my brothers and sisters. I'm sick of the people I do life with going in cycles, especially myself. We're Christians. We're supposed to be victorious. I want to come into church and be like, they, there is miracles in this house. Do you believe it? Yeah. You know? I don't want to be wound up anymore. I don't want to be wound up by the third song to say, okay, God, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know? I want, to be, I want to be a generation that's victorious, a church that's victorious, a people. Why can't we walk like that? And I'm telling you, this is, this is why, and we're going to expose it. He's a liar, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't like players, okay? <laughs> so um, I want to go to James 1, 16, 25. It says, don't be deceived, my brothers and my sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change, like shifting shadows. So our emotions are like shifting shadows, right? We're like, I feel good. No, I don't. I mean, immediately. It's like one trigger. You see somebody you don't like, you see somebody you, do, you didn't forgive, and it's like, I remember. Um, and then it says, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. So he gave birth to Adam and Eve through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruit of all he created. And so, okay, he won. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. How many of you guys have read a scripture and just said like, okay, that's cool. I did my part. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently, so you might be down, you might be deceived, you might feel like I don't have no hope, but if you say, God, the fight in me is going to look for the truth, that's when deliverance comes. And it says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, you can't just look at it one day you got to continue in his truth because one day away from God is a step away from the truth. 
It's like, and we all have been there. Some, I'm telling you, from March to prayer fasting, it was like one week I was good, one week, one week I was not. One week I would open my Bible, one week I would not. So it says, um, where I'm at, <clears throat> uh, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. And so me being away from God, I felt like what I was doing here at church or what I was doing in my family, what I was doing as the walk of God was not a blessing to me because I was deceived. And so God is saying, if you continue in my word, if you continue in my truth, if you continue, then I'm going to bless you. He's going to bless you. And so the last thing before my time is up, um, and this is how you do it. I want you, I, I don't want you to leave today and say, well, I heard, that was a good message, so how do I do that? Because I was li literally telling God, how do I get out of deception? How do I get out of being deceived? And he says, number one, humble yourself and come to him. That's number one, and that's the hardest one. It sounds good. My dad, tells, my dad, my dad always tells me, it sounds good, it might be good. And I'm like, okay, but you have to do it. Right? And so that is the hardest one. The moment you do that, everything falls into place. And it's not coming to him to, to vomit on him and leave. It's coming to him, quieting your heart and saying, God, change me from the inside. And so I want to uh, tell you the scripture, Psalms 37, 7 through 8, TPT version. I love that version. You have to read it. It's the bomb.com. Um, seven, quiet your heart in his presence and pray. Keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for you. And don't think for a moment that the wicked in their prosperity are better off than you. We all have them, they, her, and him, right? What about them, God? What about my neighbors? What about her? She's not even walking with you. Oh, I, I don't know how many times I was like, what about her? I know what she did last summer. No. I was like... I know her. She's not, I, I, I remember her from GDI, right? And we're like, why is she prospering? And I'm walking with you, God, hard, sweat, blood, and tears. And I'm, and I'm all over the place, right? And then in um, chap, uh, verse 8, it says, stay away from anger and revenge. Keep envy far from you, for, the one, for it only leads you into lies, and so when we're mad about them being prosperous, when we're mad about them getting their promise, when we're mad about this, it actually puts us deeper in deception. It puts us deeper into lies. And now we're like, Ugh, not only do we have lies, but we have anger and revenge, all the homies. <laughs> and so, and, and number two, repent. This is number two. So humble yourself. Number two, repent. How do you repent? God, forgive me for believing the lie. And that's hard too. But they did that to me, God. Okay, they did that to you, but I provided truth for you. I provided freedom. I provided peace, and you didn't want to take it. Lord, forgive me. That's repenting, right? Um, forgive me for walking away from you. Forgive me for being in depression and anger. Depression is inward anger. Forgive me for that. Oh, double-sided papers. I love you. And number three, learn and train. The things we don't want to do, right? Learn and train. It says, uh, I said, you got to learn to be wise. After you've been tricked, okay, I've been tricked. All right, God, I see how the devil worked. Am I going to allow that again? That's where the cycle begins again, when you allow it again. I'm going to be wise. Um, learn not to fall into that pit, because that pit is hard to get out. And God's warning us time after time. Learn how to stay close to the truth. Um, and learn how to cast down your thoughts and train your thoughts. The hardest thing I've ever done in my Christian walk, to train my thoughts. Because they go wild. I mean, I have full-blown pictures and movies in my head. Scenarios of like, oh, man. But how do you train your thoughts? The first, you know, and I'm still doing that. And I never arrive in that. We never arrive. But one thing I know is that you have to train your thoughts by saying, no. That's not what the word of God says. That's why you need to be close to the truth. Because if you don't know what the truth says, how are you going to fight? Right? No, God, I'm called. I'm called, I'm chosen, I'm a royal, royal, royal priesthood. God says that if you are, he says that if I'm for you, who can be against you? All these things you have to fight. You have to be close to the truth. That's how you train your mind. And so even in the world, I, I, I also uh, read successful people in the world books, right? Even they think, they know to renew your mind. Even they know to renew their thoughts. But we're in the church like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't need to renew my thoughts. But God's like, you have the word here. And every time you read the word, it changes your thoughts. 
And so um, that's my three. So the first one, humble yourself, repent, and then learn and train your thoughts. For the first week that I was coming out of this deceptive place um, in 10 days of prayer and fasting, I was literally, I I don't care if I look crazy, but I'm going to win because I'm like, I'm going to win. And I was like, no. I'm like, nope, I'm not thinking that today. No, devil. I don't, I don't know who's around me, but I'm like, nope, that's not, I'm not going there. I'm not going into that place of depression. I'm not going back to that place, a trigger. I'm not going back into that place of hopelessness. I'm not. And so that's how you train your mind. Last scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, 6. <clears throat> it says, we can demolish every deceptive. So can and can't, that's a choice. I learned that from Pastor Virginia. She goes, if they say can't, that's a choice. So we can demolish, we can if we choose every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude. We have an attitude when we're mad at God. We're like, "Uh uh-uh, right? And then it says, that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners. That's aggressive. Prisoners of war. It's not like, come on, little thought. It's like, get over here, right? So we capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bows. You insist, no, you are going to bow. My family is going to be different. My family is going to break cycles. My family is going to break the cycle of infirmity, of of poverty, the cycle of of not having God in the family. And then it says, um, since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, God's weaponry is, is not one way. He gives you strategy, right? The way you did it before is not the way he wants to show you how to do it now. Um, Where am I at? We stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion. Rebellion is when you don't want to come to God. What? Yeah, when you're like, "Mm -mm, I'm mad at you, God. That's rebellion. As soon as you choose complete obedience, the moment we humble ourselves, God's like, here I come. Here I come. So... I I just want to encourage you today, don't be deceived. You got to come out this place and say, I'm not being played again. You got to come on Sunday, say, you know what? This week, I declare healing from my family. I declare healing from my mind. I declare healing from my soul. God is the savior of our souls, will, mind, and emotion. I declare that today. And so I want you guys to walk out this place and say, you know what? I know. I see you, devil. I see you. All right, thank you, guys. Yes. That's my best friend, y'all. Mm, she's so beautiful. She's taking applications, too. I'm just kidding. All right, all right, all right. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Sorry. Bring it back. Ooh, Jesus. Because we ain't played anymore. She'll review them. No, you know what? Oh, my God. See what happens? We're best friends. Anyways. You know, I love what we're talking about today, and it's about being played. You know, for so long, so many of us have been played, and it could be in the smallest things. And I remember, um, <laughs> I remember it so vividly. It was April 9th, 2018, at 7 p.m. exactly. I, yeah, exactly. I was at a worship conference. It's called Outcry. And I remember sitting there. I was hearing my favorite worship team, uh, you know, lead, Bethel. I love Stephanie. You know, Elevation Worship was there. And it was just a grand time. Like, you would think, you know, the glory of God is there. It really was there. And then all of a sudden, while I'm standing there, I'm worshiping. And just this big, huge wave hit me of fear began to grip my heart. And all of a sudden, I remember every single painful thing, every single painful memory that came from my past year where my family and I went through hell. And then all of a sudden this year, when I almost died in an accident, this fear of like, oh my God, like I'm not promised tomorrow. Or, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, amazing things are coming into my life, but God, I'm afraid you're gonna take them away from me. And I just stood there and I'm worshiping God and just this fear, anxiety, anxiousness came over me. And I was like, why God? And I prayed and I was in the presence of God and it didn't make sense. But you know what? Since April 9th, 2018, I can tell you this, that God has taken me on a journey that I will never regret that I've been on. Because when God takes you on a journey, that means he's walking you through every single season. He's walking you through every single moment that you're in. So are y'all ready to walk? You better put on your Nike shoes. All right, so life is full of different types of waves that hit us, right? I told you, I felt like this huge wave just hit my face, and I was like, okay, Jesus, all right, let's grip on. But you know what? 
I believe that God has given us a strategy so that we can overcome. He's given us a heavenly strategy. Just like Pastor Feli gave you three, I'm also going to give you some too today. And so when you enter into the presence of God, you need to know that you're entering into God's playing field. And when it's God's playing field, that means the enemy has no right to even come in. He has to actually shut up and don't speak. He's underneath your feet. And so you need to know that when I come into the presence of God, then that means that I have the authority because Jesus is inside of me. So that means that I do not have even the right to be played because I'm his. And we've been seeing that I am who you say I am, but do you really know who you say you are? Because if you know, then you don't get played. And even if you do for a moment, you get back up, you dust yourself off and you keep on going in the game. And so we're going to go, yes, you can give God a shout of praise here. I love Wednesday. You guys are fun. We're going to go to Lamentations 3, 28 through 30. Once you're there, say, hey. hey. Yes, I love it. That's what I do to our worship team all the time. They love it. All right, it says, when life is heavy and hard to take, go off by yourself. Enter the silence. I love it because that's exactly what she said. When life gets heavy, usually we run to our friends. I do it all the time. I run to my mom. I cry to her. Or we run to anything that will give us substance. But God is saying, when you feel like life is getting heavy, go by yourself, enter in silence, bow in prayer. Don't even ask questions. He doesn't want to hear your questions. He already knows what's about to come out of your mouth. But he says, wait for hope to appear. Don't run from trouble. Take it full face. The worst is never the worst. And I'm going to say a bold statement to you tonight. And that is, even though you may have had a moment, even though you are probably having a moment right now, like this girl right here is having a moment, or you're going to have a moment in the future, I want you to know that it's time for us as followers of Jesus to ready say it is the time is over of being played and it's now time to play be played by God it says that we're his instruments so the only type of playing we need to do is being allowed to be played by God into what he wants us to do and so you see the enemy will confuse you make you think and feel like this is it like this is my life nothing's ever going to change nothing um, but it's when you're at the end of your rope that God can begin a very good work in your life. And that's the best place to be. And so if you feel here, you're sitting, you're like, I'm at the end of my rope, Alexis. Then I tell you, you're at the best place. I can tell you that confidently you're at the best place. And like I said, you know what? Life comes to you at waves and different waves. And so I have two things for you. We can put them on the screen. There are waves of life, right? So it hits you. If you've been to the beach, I don't surf because I don't want to be bitten by fish or by sharks or like have jellyfish because if a jellyfish stings you, someone's got to pee on you and like I don't want to go through that process, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, so there's waves of life. So there's danger in the waves. And I'm like, okay, what do we do though? I have been swimming though. I'm not great at it, but I do it. But there's two things you can do. You could either ride the wave or you can go under it. So you're saying, Alexis, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you exactly what it means. When you ride a wave, that's a time of preparation. See, when you begin to ride a wave when you surf, which I'm just imagining because I've seen many movies, um, when you ride a wave and when you surf, right, you're becoming prepared. You can see the wave. You know how it's forming. You can perceive it. Okay, it's going to hit at this moment. All right, I'm going to do this at this time. And that's like life. You can see things that come at you in life. And those are the gracious moments that God gives us. He's like, hey, uh, something's about to happen. This is what I need you to do. This is what I have, need you to say. Boom, 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 boom. You're like, okay, God, I submit it to you in prayer. You're going, right? You, have you ever had those moments? Yeah? Okay, wonderful. I love those. I wish I could live in them all the time. Now, there's the times where you have to go under the waves of life. This one's my favorite one. Because when you go under the wave, that means now you're submitting. That means now it's requiring you to yield every single thought, every single action, every single word before God. And you know what? Today, I really believe that God is calling you either to ride it, which is amazing, but I really feel we're in a season right now where we're going under the waves. It doesn't mean we're drowning. What it means is that we see the wave. It may have hit us when we weren't ready, but God's saying it's time to submit, it's time to resist the devil, and he's going to flee from you. So once you get under the wave, you get back up, that wave is gone, you're afloat again, and you get to ride the next wave. And so I really believe that that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to discern, hey, am I going to ride it or am I going to go under it? No matter what, you're submitting. You know, when you're riding it, you're submitting. When you're under it, you're submitting. But there's those moments where you're actually, hey, you're yielding everything to God. I love those. It's not fun. But God is not shocked or surprised at where you're at. And what I've learned is to never run away from God. Instead, we run towards him. And like Pastor Felicia, my bestie, was saying, I just love her, we are vulnerable to deception when we remove ourselves from being alone with God. 
we are vulnerable to deception when we run away from God. There was something I read today and it said, a day without the presence of God is a wasted day. So I was like, I've had like three months of just like one day I'm in, three weeks later I'm not. And I'm like, dang, I've wasted a lot of time. But I need you to know this is that God is a redeemer of time. He says that I'm going to redeem your time. Even though you may have wasted it, he says, it doesn't matter. I'm good. And so I'm going to move forward in your life. And so I want to charge you guys today that as you're hearing this, don't be those people that hear it and then leave and then don't do anything. And I'm speaking to myself. I'm like slapping myself on the inside because one day away from the presence of God is a wasted day. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live another day wasted. I don't want to live another day worrying about what's going to happen in the future. I don't want to live another day worrying about why am I not this? Why am I not that? Why can I be her? Why can I be that? I'm so sick of it. And that's how you have to get angry on the inside. Righteous anger, not an anger where you're upset because this this is not going, but a righteous anger that says, no, I am done being played with and I'm moving forward and I'm submitting myself and I'm entering into his rest. And that's how aggressive you have to be. It is okay. If you need to punch a pillow, you can punch a pillow as you're at it. But I'm being serious. Um, you have to run to God. If there's anything I know is you need to run to God. This whole day, I cried like five, six times. Even my mom was trying to console me, and it wasn't working. Because I was like, I do not want to keep running this race. But you know what? God is so faithful, and he's so kind that I'm right here right now running the race still. And I believe that God wants you to do that as well. Y'all are cool. I love you all. Anyway, so when I explained right that earlier moment this year, it was really bad. I honestly felt like I lost myself for three months. I didn't know who I was. I didn't find joy in anything. Even if good things were happening in my life, I just couldn't enjoy them because I, I just couldn't. And so the reason why is because I began to chew on the lies. I began to chew and chew and chew on things that I knew wasn't of God, and it just began to create fear in me. But I remember that even in those moments that God is still calling me and God's still calling you to ride the waves with him, to ride the waves of life and to not do it alone because he has a purpose and he has a plan for you. And so the voice of God is what will keep you going and what will bring truth into your life. There's prophetic words and they're amazing. There's encouragements from friends and they're amazing. But the only thing that could ever get you through is the voice of God. And that's the best voice that you can ever hear. And when you hear that voice, you write it down. Always remember this. You write things down, people. When you come to church, you better take out your notebooks because learners take notes. And those are the people that retain the most, all right? You can take that to the bank. All right, we're going to go through one more scripture. And that's Hebrews 12, 25 through 29. When you're there, say, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Make very sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. I didn't say that. The Bible did. It says, make very sure that you never, that you never, never, never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be really vulnerable with you. I don't like being vulnerable, but I'm learning. I was like, I told God this year, I was like, I am scared to hear your voice because I don't know what you're going to say. And I don't know if I want to do it, God. I'm being serious. I talked to him and I was like, I don't know. And I don't think I want to do it, God. But you know what? It's just innate in me to obey God. So don't, don't struggle with God. Just listen the first time. It's going to go smooth. For the God who spoke on the earth, it's true, from Sinai is the same God who speaks now from heaven. Those who heard him speak his living word on the earth found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn our backs on God and refuse to hear his warnings as he speaks from heaven there is no way that you can run away from God as much as you try to physically there is no possible way it even says in Psalms that I make my bed in hell if I make my bed in the depths he is there he's there every single moment he hasn't left you even in the hardest times where you felt like it was just you alone you didn't understand it didn't make sense he's saying I am there I cannot turn my back from you because I'm a good God and so you need to know this today. It doesn't matter where you've been. God will never turn his back from you. And he loves you. All right. Yes, they're super on point. The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountain. But now he has promised once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of the world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. Now this phrase, once and for all, clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking. 
that is the old order. So only what is unshakable will remain. Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with awe, for our God is a holy, divine fire. And we can keep that up there. I love this because... It's saying, when you don't refuse to hear the voice of God, this is what takes place. Too many times, I feel like the body of Christ is the most shakable thing. You know, the world is so solid on their values. They're so solid on what they believe. But when it comes to us, we're so like, Ugh, like one little thing, we're like, ah, shaking. Like we're, we're moved. Like I'm shaking probably every week, you know. But God is saying, I'm creating something that is unshakable in you. The only thing that should be shaking in your life is the removal of things that shouldn't be there. That's the only shaking that should be taking place in your life. Not shaking in your boots because you don't know what's going to happen. It's the shaking and the removal of things that shouldn't be there. And I believe that God is beginning to shake things up in Elevate Church. And if you're new here to Elevate Church, welcome to our family because our church is an unshakable church. And the reason why is because we get uncomfortable. We make sure that you don't stay where you're at. We make sure that we push you. I, mean, I can tell you how many times my dad made me cry every Sunday when I started leading worship. The Lord, oh my gosh. Like, we don't let you stay here. And God wants you to know that he is removing everything that could have made you stumble. And he's saying, child, won't you just take a moment to enter back in and to not be played by the enemy, but allow me to play you as an instrument. And like I said, the voice of God over your life will begin to remove everything that could have shaken you. And you know, even as, as I, I'm starting to close right now, um, this is very vulnerable for me. Because I was like, I, I didn't want to speak and be real. Sorry, Daddy, you're seeing this on live stream. Um, but I really believe that, you know, Feli and I, we want to tell you guys that even though there's moments in life that it feels like you want to quit or it doesn't make sense, God is saying, hey, I'm here with you. I've called you. I've chosen you. I've called you to be steadfast in my love. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.